Welcome to the Mitten Music Podcast. A couple of guys just chilling, hanging out, talking about Michigan music, all the things that make up our Michigan music community. It is the Mitten Music Podcast. Thanks for joining us. We have a great episode lined up for you right now. Hey, Jeff. We have Ryan Jamgotch. You got a from- recording? Electric Moon Studios. Of course I'm Shoot. recording. I, I'm sorry. We gotta start. Oh, did you think I wasn't recording? This is fine. No, I know. But I didn't realize you had Little the Because there was one time when you didn't. There was. There was one time out of 65. Maybe two or three. Yeah, right. Maybe three. That's good. Yeah. Ryan, how the heck are you, man? I'm doing good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just moving my headphones. Oh, yeah, you're good. good. Ryan, the owner of Electric Moon Studios That's in me. Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's me. Yeah. Ryan, I say your company's name every five days a week <laughs> on the Sonic Coast. Well, that's great. A sponsor shout out to our friends at Electric Moon Studios in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then, but there's a bunch of other sponsors, so I actually have to so, kind of look at my notes to see which one is which. But mm. sponsoring Sonic Coast, how did that come about? And um, Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. So um, that kind of. I believe it kind of started from uh, the whole New Moon songwriting contest thing um, that 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 Al Lively and I like yeah like co-started and 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 everything and then um, and then Al thought of of contacting Brian okay uh, to be a judge um, and since I was kind of like already on it um, Brian was just like hey uh, we want you to be the like the new sponsor for Sonic Coast what do you say and I was like sure. That's cool. Sounds that's like all it took, and that's pretty easy. Yeah, it's oh, literally that easy. No <laughs> well, that's why he gets, lets me talk about mitten music. Whenever I'm on there, he's like, talk about mitten music. I mean, luckily, a good amount of our interviewees are, are played, played outside on of there. Coast, yeah. coincidentally, because they're from Michigan. So it kind of makes perfect sense. Right. But yeah, that's good stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Brian's a good guy. So let's talk about that. The since we're on the topic of sound, the songwriting challenge, it just ended not too long ago this year for twenty twenty four. Yep. Um, talk a little bit about how that came to be with you and L and and others who have been involved and and um, and how this year's went. Yeah. So this year was the second year that we've ever done it before. Yeah. Um, so we're still like relatively new, but. Um, so I kind of got in contact with L a long time ago because my band um, at the time, um, Cameron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Um, we uh, we wanted to get in contact with L for like for like her like consultation thing with with bands and like promotion and um, and all that stuff. And then you know after after we did that, I was kind of just like, well, maybe I should just talk to L and and. And be like, hey, like, you know, in terms of studios in Michigan, like, what's a good way to really, like, stand out, you know? Mm. Um, and she kind of had this idea of, of just doing this whole uh, songwriting contest thing. Um, <laughs> and it's funny. I mean, like, she kind of, like, approached me with the idea. Um, and I was just like, sure. Um, but I, I think it kind of, you know, stemmed also from me sending her a bunch of my clients um mm-hmm. and so she kind of wanted to like like give back um yeah and then we just kind of started it we, we we didn't really know what to expect um you know last year we did it all on, on instagram um and i thought that, that was a really good success we had about 84 um different artists that submitted music um, and then this year we, we took it off of, off of social media and then, then we just did like, like a Google submission form thing. Mm. Um, and you know, a lot of different people that we, that we've never like had just, you know, uh, they, they, they submitted to it. And, uh, so yeah, so that, that just got done. Um, uh, Aspen and Isabel, uh, those are like their names, um, that they go by, um, they um they're the winners of 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 this you know most recent new moon songwriting challenge yeah. and uh so they're going to be getting a lot of different um you know prizes and and just is it like things. recording time at yeah. your studio mm-hmm. and is there anything like other stuff outside of that or is it's basically just to get somebody into the studio and 
start working on stuff? No, so this this year is actually like pretty insane. Um, so, uh, well, both years and like pretty much like all of the years uh, moving forward, um, you know, like I'll offer like free studio time for for, uh, for tracking and mixing and, ma- and mastering that one song. Mm, mm-hmm. um, and then L will do like a like a promotion type of consultation Ooh, branding mm-hmm. call thing. Cool. Um, and then I think Brian uh, from the Sonic Coast might might be like also offering like some like promotion like like or after, at least throwing the song in on yeah. the Sonic Coast at the very least. Yeah, and then and then um, and then we all we contacted like a few other people. Um, you know, one of them is is is, is, uh, is WICE. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so so then you know they'll definitely be getting like played on WICE. For sure. Um, they're going to be getting like this like 30 day like Spotify campaign uh, promotion thing as well. Oh, yeah. Um, That's cool. Yeah. And then and then and then there's another company. I believe they're called uh, Great River Vinyl. Um, they're going to be like doing uh, doing like five like custom uh, 45 vinyls. What? Sweet. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's that cool. would be besides recording time at your space. That might be the next coolest thing, getting like some vinyl records of your song. Yeah, yeah. Forty five, that'd be sweet. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh a, definitely a lot of different prizes yeah. and um and it's it's a lot different than what it was like last year. Um last year we had a whole different panel of of, of judges and so the prizes were a lot different. Um sure. to this year and and you know, next year probably gonna be different as well yeah which um, is good i mean it does it kind of gets other people involved and, mm-hmm. and and other things for those artists to experience which is great yeah is there a prize for like the worst song no <laughs> because i was thinking i'm hearing this i'm like i will write a song for the next one to try to win the prizes but mine will probably be the worst but maybe there's a prize for that maybe we could sponsor a prize for the worst <laughs> song yeah, there no. you go yeah, yeah. No, but how can we get on this, Jeff? We should we do should, something we should, too. Yeah, we should. We should put her in somewhere. Put, get him on for an episode. The winner can come on for episode. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if that's worth anything to them, but right, it's not like we're gonna throw a bunch of money, <laughs> money. But and if I'm right, Ryan, right, this contest or this challenge, whatever you want to call it, um, mm-hmm. it's about getting artists to collaborate together. Yes, yeah, which is different than other contests where I've seen some challenges, but they they basically are writing a song by them, their band or submitting that right and trying to see if they can win but this is is actually writing a unique song yeah it's it's a lot different than like a regular like battle of the band type of thing right um you know where where like the goal is to get like two or more like completely different artists um to come together um and just write a song um but like with a focus of of those artists not normally like collaborating with mm. with each other. Yeah. Um that was kind of like our main focus uh to try to like stand out. Um and so far it's been it's been really sweet. Like a, a gospel singer and a metal guitarist like yeah. them getting together. Like that would, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. that was a pairing at some point. It could make something magical. Well, yeah, is that yeah. absolutely they could. So what was the um I'll ask two questions. First, the the winners you said Aspen and Isabel. Mm-hmm. So what were the, what were kind of their backgrounds in the song they kind of put together? How was that? Yeah, so it was so it's acoustic. Um, I believe Aspen was was uh, playing acoustic and then singing, and then Isabel was also singing as well. And it's like it's it's like a uh, folk, but like. But like the guitar playing is like really complex, kind of mm. like Ooh. like like in in my opinion, it's like I don't know, maybe like uh, oh man, what was the guy from uh, um, Tim Henson from Polyphia? <laughs> no, I wish <laughs> that's um, what I, like that's what I immediately think when anybody says oh, like some weird guitar playing, like it's like yeah, of course. It's 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 like it's ki- I mean this might be a long shot, but it's a little bit kind of like uh, Lindsey Buckingham. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Mixed with like you know two really good uh, uh, female singers, and it's just like it's really, it's um, it's really like light and airy, but it also like hits you in the feels Ooh, just by like I their like just by their like their their harmony choices and like mm-hmm. and the melodies and everything. And um, that was, I mean, 
that was one of my favorites. <laughs> sure. Um, and obviously, it's it was a bunch of other people's favorites because because they won. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really excited to like you know go in and like and like and, and produce this track. You know. Yeah. Um, I was gonna ask. So if they how are the rules set up for the contest? Because you said you wanted people that were from different spectrums of music, maybe. Uh, it it doesn't have to be like spectrums of music. Music. It just has to be like someone you don't know, or like someone you don't haven't worked with. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 for example, like, like, if if my band Cameram, like, entered the contest, like, like, it can't just be Cameram entering the contest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's got to be a specific person from Cameram with somebody. Well, I mean, it could be. It can't be two people from Cameram, can it? Correct. Okay, there. Yeah. That I got you. There. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Okay, I, I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. But mm-hmm. you, but you're not pairing people up. It's just the go, like come with a partner that yeah. you haven't worked with before. Yeah. So they do all of like the actual like pairings and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Was there was there something that stood out even last year or this year that was it might have not won but like just was very unique of like a like you would never expect these the sound to come out or something. I don't know. What do you mean? Like uh, I don't know. Like he like he said, gospel in a in a metal play. I mean, just oh. something that's just <laughs> stood out, but maybe wasn't you know stood out in the sense that it's, it's the best, but just kind of unique. And was there any like country ICP or anything <laughs> like that? There was a lot of country. Um, I, mean, I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't, not but no insane cloud posse. <laughs> no insane cloud posse <laughs> with a country twang. <laughs> so there was one. There was one song that really stood out, um, and I can't really pronounce. Uh, one of the members like last name so i'm just like not even gonna yeah yeah, like go there yeah do that but um it was like um it was my third from the top uh of i think like 30 something submissions um that was like um it was kind of like i don't even know how to describe it it was just it's something that you just have to hear i'll have to like play it for you yeah that's my favorite like i love i love I've found that even we'll go. Jeff and I will like go see a show that we know a couple of the bands playing, but there's like mm-hmm. one we don't know. I'm yeah, like, we can't look them up. We just got to show. We just got to find out what it is about. Yeah. And the last time we did that, it was Luce, Ended up being Lucius Fox, who I freaking <laughs> love to death. Now we had him on this podcast, and they're mm-hmm. shout out to Lucius Fox. They're playing Friday night at Turnstiles. But this will air well after that. But I still want to let them know that we think about them. <laughs> but that's exactly like I heard them. I was like, "Who is? This? I don't know this guy. This is weird. I don't know what." I start my jaw just dropped the, like the first ten <laughs> seconds they started playing. I was like, "This is right. awesome. Yeah. I love that." Yeah, it was like um, you just got to hear it. Yeah, it was. It, it's like um, I don't even know how it's to describe it. it. It really was indescribable. What yeah. instruments did they use? So okay, so it, it, so some people will just do like a phone recording of like them playing like guitar and singing. Mm-hmm. But these uh, this couple uh, they they kind of like semi like produced it. Gotcha. Um, in their like you know software and everything. But they, there was like there was like flutes, there was like keyboards, singing uh, obviously. Um, but it was like it's like it was like really like dissonant. But also like beautiful at the same time. It was like I'll have to just show you afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are they planning I, to I even though, you know some of these things? You know, you wonder if they're gonna. I hope a lot of these mm-hmm. artists will take their songs that they submitted and at least move forward with them mm-hmm. if they feel like it was worthwhile. Yeah, I mean maybe you know um, that has happened uh, last year. Um, there was uh, two friends that kind of just like formed a band. Um, just because of you know uh, this whole like, this, this whole contest, and oh, then and then and then after yeah. that, you know, they they, they started becoming a, um, a a studio client of mine. Oh, yeah! Wow, What's, who would that be? Can, yeah, can you say? Yeah, that? yeah, what they're they're be? called Big Scaries. Big um, Scaries. Yeah, Big I actually I was uh, I heard that one of those I think one of their songs that you was on your playlist. Yeah. By the way, which mm-hmm. I loved having your playlist of all the songs that you've produced. Or maybe it's not all of them, but a no, big, that majority is, yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah, and there's awesome. stuff that I have to update on there too. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. Big scaries. It was it was a pretty cool. The one song I heard was pretty cool. I didn't know there was this playlist until like an hour ago. Yeah, so yeah I will be uh, listening to that all day tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Sweet. There's some good. That's cool. So so some of the artists and we can hit into that a little bit. So some oh, yeah. of the some of the bands and artists that you've produced and obviously you can add to this, but 
10 peso version. Yeah. Woo. Uh, we like them. Love them. Uh, Nathan Walton and the Remedy. Love We've done them. a couple of their albums. Love that band. Uh, yeah. They've, they've done a lot. Um, Old Mountain Acid Test. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Your yep. band, obviously, Cameraman, yeah. is yeah. on there. Now, so that's, I would say some of those were more rock and blues, right? Mm-hmm. But then you've got, you do some hip hop, yeah. I would call. Yeah. And, um, with, um, what is it? Uh, Eminem. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I no, yeah, yeah, I you the haven't worked with M yet. I can't you haven't remember worked it. the M yet. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. Uh, Mike, what would you call Mike on the stage? Yeah, yeah, Mike on the stage. Yeah, Nick. so yeah, that one I I I just mixed and mastered it. Yeah. Okay, and mm-hmm. then Nick Nick Urban Urbane. Yeah, Nick Urbane. Um, that that was a sweet project. He so he produced it himself, and then then he came to me, and then um, we retracked all of the vocals. Um, I added a bunch of like guitar layers and. And then, like, you know, kind of coached him on, like, different types of harmony ideas and just kind of, like, being like, hey, I kind of want to, you know, throw this in, you know, mm-hmm. in, into the song. Um, so I, like, kind of, like, semi-produced it a little bit um, and kind of, like, helped him with, like, finalizing everything. Um, and then I uh, and then I mixed it and then mastered it as well. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you got a litany of... of, of- Artist. Kid Rock, right? I'm sure he was <laughs> on there. Oh yeah, you've I mean, even, he's, you've he's even a, worked. He's even worked with Brian Vanderark. Yeah, that's so cool. how'd that work? So out? yes and no. Okay. Oh, I was gonna say. Well, I was gonna ask that caveat. because I was gonna ask because um, I'm trying to think of his name that is in the Verb Pipe or was is not anymore. Yeah, I know he's produced a lot of oh. stuff. Yeah, you talk about uh, Joel Ferguson. Yeah. Yes. Ferguson. Yes. That's what yep. I could think of his name. Um, so I was curious what you know. How oh, he showed happened. up on the list, yeah. Um, wait, who like so Joel or or, or uh, Brian? Well, Brian. how you, yeah, you had a couple, couple songs. Yeah, the so there. so it actually kind of starts with Joel. Um, so so when I was in high school, uh, my band at the time. Where did you go to high school? By I, went the way. To, I went to Rockford High School. So you're okay. lo- you're local from yeah. West Michigan. Just yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so we so my high school band at the time it wasn't Cameron, but it was a different band called On the Line. We were like a prog rock band. Okay, mm-hmm. really weird stuff. <laughs> um. We did an album at Planet Sunday Studios. Um, that was our like debut album, and I just really enjoyed the process of recording. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then so I just kind of asked him. Uh, I asked uh, Joel, uh, the owner of, of of that studio. I was like, "Hey, can I intern here?" And he was like, "Sure." Um, and one of the things that he didn't tell me was <laughs> was that he doesn't like. So like in terms of like internships with people and, and I've, I've also kind of found this out with my own business, but a lot of people ask studio people to like intern. And so you can easily like weed out like, like, like the good interns versus the bad interns. If you don't tell them like, like your entire like schedule for like what you got to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I kind of always had to like ask him, um, like, Hey, like, when you have sessions going on this week, you know, and I would just always ask him that. And I was, I was in, I was in the studio maybe like, um, like two to three times a week, honestly. Okay. Um, you know, my, is he wanting you, these people to ask so they can do more? Like, what can I do? What can I help with when you're going to be there? Is, is that it? Cause well, they don't, yeah, why, what's the why secret here? Yeah. Why don't they, or maybe you're getting to that. We're jumping the gun. Why don't they give the, Why is that secret that they don't give the full schedule or the full thing of what they're gonna the interns gonna do? Well, it's not really like what the intern is gonna do. It's like so. So for example, it's like if you were to ask me, hey, um, can I intern at, at your studio? Yep. I'll say yes, but um, it could I'm, be one time, one day. Yeah, you like, know, uh, like, like like unless I uh, press to want to do more. Exactly. Okay, um, so, and that's you're trying to weed out good work ethic, like who's yeah. hungry for it. Exactly. Okay, that's what I thought, but I yeah. Wasn't well, well, I was thinking, I was going to ask you this: Is it because is it part of it that if you gave them the schedule and you saw, hey, we're gonna we're gonna record with this person or this person, this person? Oh yeah, I want to work that day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, like, I mean, sometimes like schedules change change and all the time i mean like my first time ever interning at his at his studio my, the, the first two times were interesting um the very so the the first time i, I walked in i was just this high school kid not really knowing anything about like recording at all and uh it's this it's this like south african singer just doing like 
singing uh, to some sort of like YouTube beat or whatever, but it was in a different language and I, I had no idea what he was singing about. But I showed up um, and I was like, wow, this is super cool. Um, and then the and then the next time uh, was this was this rapper. Um, he was he was a good he was a good rapper, but like his lyrical content was not good at all. And it was a little like hysterical, <laughs> but um, to, to be honest, and I I can't say like oh, don't, yeah don't, yeah don't say his name yeah I'm not, I can't say his name or like what the lyrical don't. content was even about it was, <laughs> it was crazy um uh so like I mean even though I had like those two like they were relatively weird mm-hmm. uh music experiences especially at like 18 years old um right you know like it. I kind of didn't really know what to expect. Um, but then like the, the third session was with this dude named Cassidy Beicher and he is a solo artist and he, he kind of does, he kind of did stuff. I mean, at the time it was kind of like a, it was like a mixture between like Radiohead and, and like pop music, like just like, hmm. like, like top 40 pop music. It was really interesting. Um, and it was super like dark and mysterious, but also heavy and also like really like effecty, like sound effect, Oh, okay. Folk, like driven. It was really cool. And kind of like from that moment on, I was just like really hooked. Um, and, and I think like, 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 like all three of those, of, of those sessions probably happened within like two weeks of each other. Um, and so, you know, fast forward like many, many years. Um, well, not many, many years, but like a couple years. Um, so the Verve Pipe, they, they, I think they did their last two or three albums at planet sunday mm-hmm. because because joel played in the band the river pipe right he played bass for like 20 years yep um and so i sat in on on one of the verve pipe uh, sessions um yeah. and then there was like a there was another time where i sat in on um on a, a brian vanderark session and this is kind of yeah uh, going back like, to yeah. what uh going back to what you were saying um so he was doing uh this like this like album of like of like cover songs but like like reimagined um so my i guess like playlist on there pretty much that just stems of just like hey like like if i've done something on this track it's going in the playlist yeah well that makes sense you know um so with that one i played guitar um for a couple songs oh Um, cool yeah just like yeah that's cool I, i think it was like black yeah so black hole sun um uh Brian's cover of, of Black Hole Sun. Mm-hmm. Um I think yeah, so I played the solo on that. Yeah. And then there was another song it was like Wichita something. Um uh-huh. yeah. and I played like a like a like a pretty specific like guitar part. Um and so I was like, all right, well that's just gonna go on the playlist. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you had so, a hand in it. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. That is fun. That's awesome. How how long? So how long ago? What? Well, that was when you were. Well, wait a second. You were playing the guitar part for Brian when you were interning. Yeah. Well, so it's it's weird. So I think that happened. Or was it, you said a couple years later? So yeah, you, you had interned. So you had gotten all your everything you did was probably better. You'd been spending the, that couple years doing mm-hmm. this, that, learning stuff. Yeah, yeah, and in and, and you know, just like Joel kind of trusted me with like playing on Brian's stuff because yeah. you know, because I, I would also play on like a lot of other people's yeah. projects too. Yeah, um, so he saw the thing in you that he's like, okay, this guy's mm-hmm. this guy's good, like, yeah, better than the, the kid who says, I, I want to intern and then <laughs> shows up once or twice and just whatever, yeah, disappears. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, so how, so you, obviously, Joel was a big part of your introduction getting yeah. into it yeah honestly like joel still is like he's like one of my like go-tos for like for like if i ever have to like ask a question or like figure something out audio related like 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 i literally just, just i literally texted him today this massive thing about like about some issue that i'm having um but i'll like i'll constantly just like go over to his studio still and just like that's great either, either like hang out or just intern intern but yeah. um you know, like a, a lot of the, um, a, a lot of his clients just kind of know me from being there over the years. So it's kind of just like a hang, like at this point. Um, but I just, you know, I'll just go over there whenever I'm bored <laughs> and, you know, and 
That's good to have. I mean, you've kind of yeah. got this. I don't. I don't I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like somewhat of a mentor. Yeah, that led led to that. And uh, so, how did that? When did the turn happen? Where you're like, I like want to do this. Um, pretty much that third session. Oh, yeah, okay. That third early on, early on. Yeah. So you knew. Yeah, I, I mean, you wanted to intern there, so I mean, yeah. there's the there's a feeling there. Yeah. So I mean, I kind of knew that I wanted to do this, um, mainly because like like I don't know like growing up. Um, I mean, I have ADHD and like, like, and like, and like, like me in school just don't vibe. Mm -hmm. And, and so the only thing that really vibed with me was like, was music and it still really is. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean, originally I kind of wanted to be like a, like a, like a professional guitar player playing like live shows going on tour and stuff. But then I was like, wait a second, like. What if I like had them all come to have, me? Yeah, have them all come to right? me. I like, like, I like that <laughs> way of thinking too. Yeah, and and that was you know back in high school. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Good for you. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, what was the journey then from helping Joel out to get mm -hmm. get to that point to where you opened up this studio? That's a long story. <laughs> kind right. of. I mean, you know. Yeah, I'll definitely tell it. Um, so it actually starts with Cassidy, uh, Cassidy Busher. Oh, okay. Um, so I would play, you know, guitar parts for Cassidy in like sessions at Joel's place. Um, and then all of a sudden for like live shows, he needed a new guitar player. And so Cassidy asked me, uh, if I wanted to play guitar in, in his like live band. And I was like, sure. I love the music. Like, let's do it. Um, and so when I like jammed with everybody there, um, the bass player of that group, uh, him and I, we kind of just started talking and, and we, and we like kind of had this, uh, like we both had this, like this like really big appreciation for like studio work. Mm. Um, and so we just kind of continued to talk and then, and then we were like, Hey, let's, let's like do like a, like, like a partnership business thing, um, called 11 collective. Um, mm. and so, you know, I, I kind of approached him with that idea um, and then, you know, I mean, like we didn't have like a place at all to like do anything out of. Um, so we had to like find a place and I believe his sister, uh, the band that she was in, which is called Bowery and they're not, they're not a band anymore, but they're, they were an awesome band. Um, they were rehearsing at this, at this like really sketchy, like, like building that, uh, that had rooms, um, like for rent. So there was a room available and we just we just jumped on it really like, like really like really like really yeah sorry really fast um yeah. this is a room to record folks if you didn't catch that not room like a renter room just to like sleep in no yeah <laughs> <laughs> or have friendly conversation with another person is it like they went there to record yeah know? i mean like like the whole building well n not the whole building but like but like that that floor it was it was just full of like of like really loud metal bands mm -hmm. Um, oh. so like it made recording very difficult. <laughs> I bet. But our rent was really cheap. So. Yeah. So it's like, you, you, had to find the, it. you had to find the right times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, 4am, 6am. <laughs> it wasn't that crazy. Mm -hmm. but. And then there was a point where, um, where we were going to like, you know, form an LLC and, and, you know, we talked before about like about like being like 50 50 like owners a balance of some yeah. kind yeah yeah a real balance mm -hmm. um and so he told me that uh that he was going to start working on the LLC and everything and i was just like hey do you need any help with it i mean i don't really know anything about LLCs, but i can help you if you need you just to go to a cpa and give him like 100 bucks and it came down to the owners he put him as as a hundred percent owner Mm. And then, and then he just was going to put me as like an employee or whatever. And so his reasoning for why he made himself a hundred percent of the owner was because he had this idea of, of, of the name 11 collective since high school. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's not a good, like if you're asking me to go in with, into business with you mm -hmm. and to form an LLC, you don't just put your name on it. Then there's no <laughs> No point yeah. in the other half of the partnership. Yeah, and it was weird. I mean, like we used a lot of my gear, um, some of his gear, um, 
you know, so like like in terms of like the the gear aspect of things, like there it was kind of split 50-50, but but the client relationship that definitely wasn't. Um and like he didn't really have that many sessions like like in yeah. that studio. So I just kind of felt a little bit used. Um and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to part ways then. Um It's actually probably a good thing that you weren't on or is it like yeah, if you, it was, if you agree yeah. and you Easy said it was escape, like, like let's just say it ended up being sixty forty or something weird. Mm-hmm. Like Yeah, it would have been bad probably long term. Or a lot mm-hmm. more work for so you to if you did want to walk away. Yeah. 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 You know, fast forward, um, well, not really fast forward, but so I was talking to other people within the actual building and there was a way better room literally like across the hall, yeah. um, like literally like less than 20 steps um, that, that used to be a studio. So there was like multiple different rooms in that, in, like, like in that room and like there was like sound treatment already in there, like... I kind of had like my own control room and then, then like a live room set up. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I also shared that room with, with, with other bands and stuff, but they had pretty much just like, well, actually in, in terms of the scheduling that really sucked in that room. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> it's funny because I got like a way better room that was like, you know, like painted really nice and it looked a lot better um, for like five bucks less. <laughs> Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, so that's kind of where like Electric Moon kind of started. Mm. But I didn't really have the branding at all. Sure. Um so at that point I was kind of just like, "All right, I'm never going to do um a partnership again. Like like this is what I want to do just by myself. Like everybody's telling me, "Hey, you should just do this on your own." And then like 3 months later, I I jump into another partnership. <laughs> <laughs> um and that one, that one was it was cool but also weird. Um, that was, uh, so that was with a dude that, um, he owned his own drywalling business. And so he kind of knew a lot more about like, like the business side of things and, and he played music, um, and wrote songs and stuff, but he didn't know anything about like the actual like audio, like Mm. recording side of things. So, you know, he kind of approached me about, about, um, about doing a partnership, um, where he's more of like the, the business like investor. And I'm more of like, you know, the business runner, like the running bit, yeah. the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was like, okay, that's definitely different than like this first thing that I just got out of like three months ago. Um, but I was super cautious. Like I was like, I was like, all right, we're gonna need to have a lot of ground rules. Um, and so we did. Um, the 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 cool thing about that that partnership that we were trying that we were gonna try to do, um was he was gonna so he knows like a lot of different like carpenters and like Mm -hmm. people like construction workers and so we were gonna turn his like his garage into like this like full production studio um it was like i don't know it was like a three or four stall garage that we were gonna that he was gonna like you know finance all that stuff um and then you know like and like we made the plans and like we designed it and everything and and then you know, months and months goes in and then he's like, like nothing's happening to this garage in terms of like, in terms of like the actual like construction to, to turn it into a studio. And I mean, he was a really nice guy and everything. And, um, you know, like the operating agreement for like the actual, like, like business portion of it was a lot more fair. Um, but you know, after like eight months of nothing, like literally nothing being done with the garage, that was kind of the point where I was like, okay, actually doing it myself. I'm going to do it time. myself. Yeah. 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 So then, you know, I, I, I stayed in, in that, I stayed in, uh, in that current studio place space that I was at before. Um, and that was like the actual birth of, of electric moon studios. And so how's that going for you? Good. Pretty freaking yeah. good. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so it's fun. So that was, <laughs> so the second the second partnership that was probably like 2018 okay or Ooh. uh maybe yeah tw- 2019 maybe okay actually um so i was i don't know like not too long ago but I yeah, mean, it, it wasn't ago. like two years ago either yeah yeah and so um and i mean i, I still was like really fresh in in terms of uh studio work and just knowing what i had to do and 
Um, but at the time, um, like during my first partnership, I, 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 went, I ended up going to, 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 uh, to GRCC for their, their like recording program. Mm. Um, and that's kind of like where I started to like, you know, meet other people that, um, that are on that playlist. So, so how do you, you kind of talked a little bit about connecting with people at GRCC. Mm-hmm. Um, I did want to ask a little bit about, yeah, how do you, how did you bring some of these people into the studio? How did you start that? What's that process? I mean, yeah. How, how are you connecting with people? So, um, it's interesting. So like, so the GRCC, like, like music stuff there, mm-hmm. they have like their own building just for music. Ooh. Um, so there's like a ton of different like majors and minors, um, just all within that 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 one building and so there would be like you know obviously like musicians are everywhere um so i would just i would just talk to people honestly oh, <laughs> and just and, and just and just be like hey like i'm i'm trying to um i'm trying to build like a portfolio like can i just like record you for free and then you know mix it and everything and, and it's funny so um even like well before i even had a studio or like you're like did any partnerships um I, uh, um, I went to this, I went to this, this, uh, I went to school with this girl named Emma Bienovich mm-hmm. and we did a song called Lavender uh, Hue. Uh, yeah. I worked with her dad. Really? I know Emma. She's, she's like what, maybe early twenties right now, mid twenties. Yeah. She's 25. Yeah. She's my age. Yeah. She, uh, yes. Emma Bet- Bienovich. Yeah. yeah. Tommy's her dad. I don't know if you, I, I don't, I don't know her parents at all. I, because I remember when I was working with him, he was like, oh, my daughter, she's been doing this music stuff. And she put her first song on Spotify when I was working with him. Yeah. I was like, tell me, this is great. And I've actually, she's uh, she's been on a list oh. of names. To, like, I'm like, oh, I'm sure I could ask Tom if his daughter would want to come in the podcast yeah. when we were for, just because we needed to mm-hmm. get anybody on, you know. Yeah. And she's still on the list. I'm like, at some point we'll call her up. That yeah. is hilarious. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's, it's, it's funny because I was gonna so, say that's not a common name. That's no, it's not. Yeah. And it's funny. So that whole so me like working with her like in the very beginning is just kind of <laughs> funny. So like, um, so like we followed each other on Instagram, but we've never like even like met like ever in in person. And and I, even till today. Well, no, 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 oh. no, 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 no like way <laughs> the back. The way then. you said it, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> no, it's sorry. Or music. I like, know, but I was like, how did he do this? No, so um, like way back then, gotcha. um, I mean, uh, I mean, I knew her, uh, I knew her boyfriend, uh, Lake Brown. Um, we did like a few shows uh, together back in the day, um, just at venues and stuff. Um, but so um, I just I I so on Instagram I I, I saw this. She posted the song called Lavender Hue, just her singing and playing a guitar. Mm. Um, and I was like, hey, this is like a really good song. Can I like record it for you, like? I go to school at GRCC with you and, 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 and Lake, um, what do you say? And she was like, sure. Yeah. I've never done that before. I've never really put out music. Um, but yeah, let's do it. That sounds like fun. Um, so that, so that, that was before I even had a studio. So I had to like figure out what to do. And <laughs> could, th- what, could that have been one of her first songs that she put out? That was the actual, that, that was okay, the first, that- did that song in just like the, the GRCC practice room. And it was like a room that was like, I don't know, maybe like, like five feet wide by like, eight feet it was, it was like super small and um i just had like like i just had one pair of headphones um like a focus right scarlet 2i2 and like a really cheap microphone and uh and i was like all right here we go ready to record <laughs> um like not even knowing like what i'm doing yeah and it's really funny because like so after putting that song out like that song is 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 it's it's like it's the most streamed song that that i've been a part of like it has like over seven hundred thousand streams on spotify that's cool and it's just funny because like that was like the first thing pretty much like the first thing and then like and like i didn't even have a studio at that point and like isn't that crazy yeah yeah and it's like still a really good song honestly yeah Yeah. and she's got some great stuff oh my brain is just lightning storming right now i gotta go i gotta text tommy i gotta (laughs) We got to get her on the podcast. Yeah, you should definitely get her on the podcast. She's working with a lot of different um, producers right now yeah. and doing a lot of features and stuff. I mean, I'm, I, I still work with her, um, you know. But so, so you know, a- after that, like, after that song, um, I just kind of approached her about doing, like, an EP. I just, like, 
five six songs or whatever and she was like sure let's do it um and then that ep turned into like 12 songs um <laughs> and then and but so i i did half of them and then and then there was another producer person that did the other half um but before that there was like a couple other songs that that we did together just singles yeah, yeah. and i and i i do remember a lot of singles before mm -hmm. it was did she call it an album the 12 songs i'm i'm yeah. assuming that was yeah the album. I guess you know you you doing recording like mm -hmm. how has things changed? Well, I guess not, I shouldn't say changed for you because you're relatively young, but you've been yeah. you've been around stuff for a while. Um, mm -hmm. You know, more of the push is I would say more releasing a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. and then maybe building up to an album. There's still some people that really like to do that album up front. Mm -hmm. What have you seen from a recording standpoint? Is it mostly just a few songs here and there, or? honestly i feel like it's way different it's just not it's 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 not like like for me i haven't really noticed a trend okay so far with like the artists that i've been working with like sometimes sometimes people will want to just do singles and that's just like that's just like you know maybe a couple artists here and then sometimes you know these other artists want to do like an ep and then like cool and then these other artists want to do an album and so it's like well it's you just, know it's yeah. just kind of everything do you approach those projects differently then? Um, sometimes. Um, so it's funny. So like, so like, like the Nathan Walton al album, mm -hmm. um, originally it was going to be just like one album. Um, and so we, we tracked all, all of the songs that like at the same time. Um, and then it just kind of got to a point where, we're, where they were just like, well, I mean, each, I mean like, like the first half and the second half of the album just kind of sound a little bit different. So, and kind of have like different themes so like let's just split it up you know mm. um so then they kind of just became like seven songs and seven songs um so i mean i don't know if you would consult consider that like an ep or an album but like in my opinion it'd be like a double album yeah you know yeah. and it's got different it makes sense that they put them together th thematically or yeah. at least the sound was yeah like. you know and, and and so like the first album is it's called daybreak and then the and the second album is called night drive mm -hmm. um i mean the the they were released at different times, but you know, like the same artist was like, like, like the same cover artist did that, you know, and like, like the, the artwork is kind of similar, but different. And yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, vi it's, it's cohesive in a sense, mm -hmm. but separate. Yeah. It's funny. So it's funny because like when I started mixing that album, I actually like kind of did it in reverse order. Um, I started with like, with like the last song on night drive and then I went all the way up. To, well, I started with the first song on daybreak, which, um, was called love for a dowry and then for some reason i just jumped from the first song to just the last song and then i just went up yeah. i don't know why um well okay I, I think i think maybe the reason why i did that might have been because like i wanted like the first song and the last song to sound like kind of cohesive just yeah. so that everything sounds like mm, like, an one thing. like a beginning yeah. and an ending like yeah yeah but what ended up happening was just like not that <laughs> <laughs> so you know yeah is, is there any difference i guess when we're talking about the process mm -hmm. is there a different process for you dealing with different genres of music of how you approach a project uh oh yeah uh kind of, yes and no so it's it's funny so the reason why i work on a lot of like genres mm -hmm. is so then I can just like blend genres like from project to project. I think that's fun for some reason. Um, so what do you mean by that? So like, for example, um, there was a, there was like a rapper that came to me and he told, so his name is Scully Taylor and we worked on like an EP together. Um, and, uh, so before I worked on that album with him or like that, like, yeah, like, yeah before I worked on that EP with him, um, I recorded a song like with him, uh, where he, he just kind of, he, 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 he approached me with like this, like YouTube, like beat thing. Um, and then he just, and then he just like sang over it and rapped over it. Um, but it's funny because he told me before we had that session that he didn't like that way of being an artist and like that way of, of like how like the rap scene is like he which which in my opinion i was like i was like what that's 
that's like totally opposite from like what everybody's doing right now. Like yeah. all rappers are like, are just like finding stuff from YouTube or like beat stars or something. And then like, and then just like, like rapping over that. Um, so I was like, okay, that's, that's kind of weird that we're going to like do that then. Um, <laughs> yeah. he's and, like, I need a producer. Is what he needs. He needs a beat maker. Well, so it's, yeah, it's interesting. So after that song was done, like, he didn't really like it and like it makes sense because he doesn't he didn't like that way of working right in yeah. general um and honestly like i felt like that he probably wasn't gonna like work with me again because of that song but then i kind of just asked him i was, I was i said like hey like what like like wh- like who are your favorite artists um and it's funny because he listed five artists and none of them were rappers Rapper, i was gonna say so interesting. the so he the first one that he mentioned was was Nine Inch Nails. Mm. <laughs> yes. And then, and then he was, yeah, so he was like, I love Nine Inch Nails, Alice in Chains. I love uh, Rage Against the Machine. Dude, why else is he like, not on this podcast? Yeah. And, well, and all those albums are like all of them. Yeah. And so I'm like, so I'm like, well, let's just make that. Like, let's just do that then. Yeah. You know? And then, and then he was like, okay, like, like, how are we going to do that? Like, I've never, like, 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 I don't, uh, he said Again, that, like, scream or growl or play yeah, yeah like, like he doesn't play any instruments like he just raps and writes writes words and i was like i was like don't worry about it i got you mm. um you know because i mean like i've i've, I've, I've been playing guitar for a long time and you know and, and i can program mm-hmm. produce like synthesizers and like and you know beats and stuff like that and you know um so he so he literally just showed up to the studio it's, it's funny he can't he had this like humongous concept of of doing an ep where each song well okay so like the entire hi- like hierarchy of like of like the ep was was like you know what life would be if it was like hell on earth you know okay and i was like okay that's kind of weird but let's do it um and i didn't realize this at the time until like maybe like you know like a few sessions in but each song, so there's five songs total. Each song was like a different part of the day within this whole like hell on earth like mm. like phenomenon thing. Um, and it's weird concept because concept album, yeah, it was a concept yeah. EP album. Thing. Whether he knew it or not, well, he knew it. I didn't know. Yeah, it. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. You um, and it's this. and it's weird because so you know you would think that you would start with the first song, but he wanted to start on the third song, mm. which was called Melancholy Skies, which was like. Because that's when he wakes up on the day. He wakes up at night, stays up all night, sleeps all day. Yeah. It was, so like Melancholy, Melancholy Skies, it was track three out of five. So that was just supposed to be like, like just like during the day, you know, like, mm-hmm. like, like, like where like the sky isn't really changing, you know, it's just, you know, sunny outside or whatever. Hmm. And it's just, you know, it's just like, like there's no sunrise happening. There's no sunset happening so it's just the day so he wanted that song to be kind of like a little bit stagnant you know um Mm -hmm. and kind of like melancholy or whatever hence the name melancholy skies um so we did that one and then we just like jumped around to different songs and i was like what are we doing here um but that's what he wanted to do and so i didn't question it um and then you know and then so pretty much what he did like, like like at the start of each song would was he would read me the lyrics and he would just like describe to me like like what the lyrics were about for that specific song and so i was like all right let's make something sound like that <laughs> um so it's funny so it's like the the song after melancholy skies it's called sunsets burning and so that one i was like okay well like what's this song about and then he was like well picture that you're in this world and like the sky is just like on fire i was like what the heck (laughs) like how i can't picture that but then i was like okay if i think about it i'm like okay well if the sky is on fire that means everything is just like i don't know red red and you know orange and just flamey so i was like okay well what within music is normally associated with that stuff well metal salsa mm. <laughs> <laughs> so like so i was like all right let's make like a metal song then yeah. for this one yeah and so it was like this fast like you know song that was it was like it was like nine inch nails mixed with like like gent music it was crazy um 
but then like but then like you know flip to like the very first song on the album you know that's supposed to be um like the sunrise happening where like where like birds are chirping and like everything is kind of like that like foggy mildewy like sunny type of thing so that song was supposed to be like super like like light and like kind of daisical and hazy yeah exactly um and i mean my favorite my favorite of all five songs was is the last one um and the last one is called night cry silent and that song is weird because um well first first of all so when i when like i asked him i was like hey so what's this song about he said well um picture like you know it's nighttime on this hell on earth stand like like uh you know world or whatever and um so like you know if you're like outside just walking around in the town like you're gonna like keep your eye open for like for like weird like weird stuff to happen you know um so he so he wanted to sound like super like you know stressful and like anxiety and like you know and just like really like eerie and i was like okay that sounds like fun um and so we so like the reason why that song is my favorite is because we i mean I, i i did a lot of um like I used a lot of like sounds that weren't instruments and used them as instruments. Mm. Um, like, like one of the weird ones was I just, I randomly texted him one day and I, and, and I was like, Hey, do you have a blender? And he was just like, yeah, why? And I was like, Hey, can you, I was like, can you bring the blender to the recording session? And he was like, sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then we just like mic'd up a blender with like an with uh with just like an SM57 and that, and then you know I just pressed record and he's messed with the buttons and and stuff so so like this blender is going and like and like the sounds are changing but the reason why I had him like bring that is because that's just one element of this whole like stressful anxiety feeling you know because like a blender does not sound good mm. It it just sounds like you know, especially when it keeps going on and on and exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like with that specific song, like, like that's that's how I was thinking. Was like, was like, okay, how am I gonna make the listener just feel like anxious? And I think we did a pretty good job with that. You know, there's a lot of different elements within that song that that that, that made that happen. And just like, there's some spots where like the beat just switches really unexpectedly, um, and it's just like. I don't know. It's just like odd and eerie and stressful and Love like it. you know. I gotta check that, it out. That is wow. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Let me, <laughs> let me just say that because it's. I always picture. Okay, I get there's elements of adjustments and things that are happening in the recording process, but to me, other than the lyrics, you basically just you guys went through the process of creating the whole the whole music, the sound. All during this process, he he had something else going on that he didn't like, and then you guys basically rewrote rewrote the whole like the like the, the sound. entire script. Well, yeah. so it was so it was so the, the thing that he didn't like it was just like a it was just like a random like YouTube beat song. So that was completely separate from this project. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, but but the entire thing in terms of like like the recording and production, like you know, he he had all of the lyrics and like and and, and, and like the rap flows like completely yeah. already written and like he had, he had them down, right. so so like I just had to like he he like it was weird like he made lyrics without any music, right? You were just we, giving him different backdrops and like tuned into what would fit like what he really wants, even though he didn't know what he really wanted. Well, I mean, yeah, it. I mean, the only thing that he knew that he wanted was just like was just was what he wanted. The the, I, the idea, yeah. yeah, the the feeling and the idea of what, mm-hmm. what it should sound like. Yeah, yeah and then and there was on, it was like strictly on like a song by song basis. Oh, that's you know because each that's song was way cool, different. Man. And and why he came to you because you brought it to life. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he had the words, he had the beats, like you say, and all that stuff, and you bet the backdrop. Essentially, well, he didn't. I mean, he didn't even have the beats. He just had. <laughs> he just had words. That's yeah, all okay. he had. Gotcha. Um, wow. And then I just did everything else. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's See, a cool story. That seems like a lot of a lot of work on your part on your side of things. Like, did you? 
Is that like up the fee? Like, does it did it cost them more? Like, it sounded no, like no. I mean, that's you just... did so much. Like, you're writing guitar parts. You're like writing songs for them, basically. Yeah, I mean that that's like that's just what a producer does a lot of the times. Like, I do that. I guess I didn't realize. I thought it was more minute. Like, it might be a sound or an instrument or this chorus. Let's adjust it. I didn't. I didn't. I, I ever. I, I mean. I've never worked with a producer before, mm-hmm. and so I guess maybe I just don't well, know. Well, and I think there's a difference, right? Not always the person doing the, and maybe I'm wrong here, but the person doing the recording, the recording studio, isn't always the producer as well, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. the producer might be working with the band and the recording studio at the same time. You're kind of doing, especially in this case, you're definitely Doom doing bo- all of yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, you know, like way back in the day, you know, like 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 where where there wasn't really like any type of like, like like easy way to like record on your own you mm-hmm. know where artists had to go into studios you know the budgets for that for that type of thing like back in like you know the 80s 90s 70s you know early 2000s were just way like way bigger than like what they are now mm-hmm. um so you know a lot of the times like back then there there would be like there would be like a recording engineer there would be a mixing engineer there would be somebody that, that that's operating um like the recording console, like like while they're in like the recording session, but then also like but then there'd be also a producer, and the role of the producer back then was mainly just to just to say like hey, like retrack this, hey do this like that, you know they wouldn't really have any like like they wouldn't really have much like hands on um, aspects to like playing things as 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 like, like as much as they do now, you know and now like in modern day like since since you know budgets for for mm. projects are just way smaller like as like the studio guy you kind of have to just do everything now mm. um so it's not common for me it's it's uh, like honestly like like uh, most of the songs that i work on like i'm just like producing and like working on like creating songs for people yeah. you know if it's not like a band that like that like already wrote all the songs and like tr- and like you know and they're like, literally, we just want to record this. Yeah. Can you help us with different ways to record it? Yeah. But but even then, you know, like sometimes They'll sometimes I'll like I'll add stuff to it, you know, like instruments or whatnot. Yeah. Sure. You know? Yeah. Dang. That's really cool. I want I wanna like even just what like I have a I've I have I c I feel like I can hear a complete original song in my head. Mm-hmm. Drums, guitar bass lyrics the entire thing whole whatever genre i can produce it in my head but i have no way to translate that like i have instruments right i can mm-hmm. play them but i don't like i'm not i don't really know them yeah like, like you could literally just come to me and like, like I, i'll make the song for you i ha- yeah it's just fe- like i have this musical thing in my head but it's just mm-hmm. i've never had took the time to put that passion to an instrument or whatever so i can release it myself Mm-hmm. I was kind of felt Here's like a I ta- screwed up that way. Maybe but. This is a tagline for Electric Moon Studio: We bring your cre- your creation and your imagination to life. Yeah, well, that's a good tagline. Not too bad. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm hearing. Like, I mean, you, in, in some ways, right? You're saying there's bands. Obviously, they have pretty well structured things. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Did did Nathan Walton come to you guys? Did you, they come and have a pretty good idea? Yeah. So with with that project, I mean, they they already had like like the song formula down right? yeah so like when we were when we started recording um we did so like all at the same time we tracked the drums the bass and the keyboards like just like the basic like uh keyboard parts we did all that at the same time um and then from there we kind of we just kind of did everything else separately so like so like nate's guitars um like whether they were electric or acoustic we did those separately um all of like so it's so like like we brought in a bunch of horn players and string mm. players and that was all separate um and um and then like you know pretty much everything besides like the drums bass and 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 like and like the fundamental like you know organ keyboard stuff um we kind of just like did it all from well like we we started with that foundation and then we kind of just thought about like okay maybe you know, for like this this section of the song, we'll do this guitar part with this tone, you know, and, and like that's kind of where you know the aspect of like producing kind of really kind of gets mm-hmm. uh, gets put into play. Yeah. So before we get any further into anything, yeah, because we, we we have been talking for a while now. Yeah. 
There's a couple questions that I've had since the beginning that I haven't asked you. We this yeah. has been the, yeah. this has been an awesome conversation. Well, it's been fun, yeah. I I we were talking about microphones when you came in. Yeah. Right? What, what can you talk to me about some of your favorite microphones or the different types of microphones that you have mm-hmm. at Electric Moon Studios? Yeah, so in terms of microphones, there's like there's like three basic like like fundamental types of microphones. There's uh, there's a dynamic microphone, there's a condenser microphone, and then there's a ribbon microphone. And then like those three like avenues like split those into like many different things, <laughs> like down like the whole tree or whatever. Um, so, I mean, I have like a mixture of dynamic microphones, mixture of like condensers and, and ribbons and stuff. I mean, some of my favorites, um, I, I, I feel like honestly, like, like, like any, like any producers and like recording engineers, like, like, like they have to say the SM57 because that's like a classic microphone. It works for literally anything. And it's like a hundred, it's like a hundred bucks. Who says the SM7B then? That's the best one. That is another fe- good one. Because I feel like a lot of people, <laughs> like I I see that one chatted about a lot, but I'm also looking at people talking about podcast stuff and vocal mm-hmm. recording specifically, not yeah. necessarily anything else. Well, the thing, oops, I just hit the microphone. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I mean, the, the funny thing about microphones is like, just like, I mean, like literally anything within like the, like the recording realm, there is no best thing. You know, everything just kind of comes. It's down what's to like, best for what you're doing, exactly, and what and, you end up using. Yeah, and even that, like, like there could be two things that are equally the best option, but one might sound mm. slightly different, and one might sound, you know, different, like a different way. And so it's kind of just like, you know, that that's kind of where you can kind of like paint with like different colors on a canvas and stuff. Oh. Um, you know, but like for example, like the uh, SM7B, like I use that microphone all the time. You know, sometimes I'll use it for vocals. Um, I recently used it on snare drum, like, which is interesting. I mean, uh, not a lot of people use it on snare drum, but, but, um, but Joel, I mean, he was the first person that I saw that use it on snare drum. Like I was like, like for, uh, for the, the snare top microphone. And so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it. You know, like a, a lot of people normally just use the, the Shure SM57 for snare drum, like top and bottom, because I mean, honestly, like that's just like a very classic snare mm-hmm. drum sound you use two mics on a snare drum yeah a lot i mean it's pretty common to do dang to, yeah. i didn't know that yeah so i mean there's yes yeah, so, i mean in terms of like the drum set i mean way that, back uh, in the, that's you know, a lot of mics on a drum set i'm guessing. yeah yeah i mean like so like for like the kick drum uh you know people sometimes will put one microphone on the kick drum or you can do like two so like so like you could put a microphone inside the actual kick drum mm. which will sound different if you Whoa. put a microphone on the outside of the kick drum Ooh. um so you know so like a lot of people will will do both at the same time um and then you know they'll kind of like blend those to taste sometimes might sometimes people might use like three mics just really depends on what they want to do snare drum a lot of the times people will do like snare top snare bottom um, I didn't know that. S- sometimes people will put a microphone on like just like the side of the snare drum, which I've never really understood. Yeah. Um, it, you're losing. I feel like you're losing something. Well, I mean, you're like, not getting it all. Well, I mean, people wouldn't do that for like the like as like the singular microphone. Like typically, I feel like if people are are putting a microphone on like the side of the snare drum, they at least have like a top and a bottom. Yeah. yeah okay. Fair. You know. Um, but you know, some, like back in the day, you know, for the toms, people would do like, like a microphone on the top of the tom and on the bottom. Um, and they sound like the, like the different positions sound way different. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so like, I mean, like for me, how I, I I normally use like 12 different microphones just for the drum set. Um, I'll do like two on the kick drum, two on the snare. I'll just do one, uh, like, like one microphone on like the rack tom, one on the floor tom. Um, I'll do two overhead mics, uh, like a, like a two, two room mics of like the drum room. Um, and then sometimes, and then from there I'll kind of just, um, I have like this microphone that's kind of, it's like in like the middle of the kit. It's like, it's, it's like placed right above the kick drum, but it's like aimed at the, uh, at the drummer. So it kind of gets like a really nice, like uh, blend of like the kick drum and the snare at the same time at like an equal like volume um and that's kind of more of like a flavor type of microphone um and then sometimes i'll do like you know something more conventional like like for that 12th microphone i'll I'll sometimes do like you know like a like a singular room mic that i'll just blend into taste if it's like 
you know, if it's like three or four feet away from the from the drum set, or sometimes I'll just do wacky stuff, you know. And like one of the weirdest things that I'll sometimes do is, um, <laughs> I have this. This is gonna sound weird, but I have this uh, this electric kazoo that you can just plug it in, and and it it and like, like there's a microphone built into the kazoo, and so I'll just like throw it somewhere by the drum kit, and it sounds like crap. It sounds terrible, <laughs> but but sometimes if you blend a little bit of that in, it has like a cool like like trashy character, you know. Huh. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's you know I love doing weird stuff. Yeah, the, like yeah. you you get to you get to practice like playing around with different sounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just and maybe someone's bringing it to you, or maybe it's just something you think of. You're like, hey, what would it sound like if it did this? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it. It's like, boom, like, that was what we wanted. There's no risk in doing it, right? Yeah, right. No, it's thinking outside the box. You don't have to use that sound if you don't want to. Yeah, if I don't want to use that, I don't need to, you know? I mean, like, like, like nine times out of ten, like, like, I'll, I'll be sure that if I am, like going to do something weird, like I'll 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 be sure to like have microphones that that I know will do yeah, the job right really well, and then like you know maybe I want to just put some electric kazoo on a kick drum or something <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> and it's just it's you know have or, you ever wanted to play the electric kazoo no like, just by itself no I just I just <laughs> uh, I just saw it in the mu- at, at real like, music and I was like I need that WTF is this yeah I mean it was like. It was like ten bucks. Heck yeah! And it's 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 weird because like, I mean, every time that I bring it up to people, everybody's like, "What the heck yeah. is that? Like, how does that work?" And picture like just picture like a kazoo, and then on top of it, there's like a hole, and then there's a, like a microphone that's just like like that's just like mounted in onto the hole. I can picture it. Yeah, I can picture huh. it. And then and then there's like a long cable that you just plug into anything so like if i wanted to i can run it through like a like a like some like guitar pedals or something i can run it to like a like an amp or something like that Hmm. um you know sometimes i you know sometimes i'll have people like sing through it um just because it has that really weird lo-fi like like grainy distorted Mm -hmm. sound um Mm -hmm. because it's a really like bad sounding mic so it's just you know super weird sounding (laughs) for sure right so that kind of leads me into my next question you said a ten dollar kazoo. Yeah, maybe that's like one of the cheapest things you have that you use. What's one of the more expensive pieces of equipment? Whether it's an instrument or a piece of equipment that you have, yeah. That you so, use, what's one of the most expensive things? My yeah. So my most expensive thing is my speakers, my my monitors. Oh, um, what are they? They are the Focal uh, Trio BE six. Um, it's like an eight inch. Um, it's an eight inch, uh, like monitor but it's like um it's a it's a triway speaker so there's there's like there's like three different like speakers within the one speaker Mm -hmm. um so you know like for for one speaker there's uh there's an eight inch woofer um there is a five inch mid-range driver and then 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 there's like a one inch um like tweeter Mm -hmm. um and that was i mean i got that i got that that uh like i got those speakers about a year ago um, maybe a little bit over a year ago. Yeah. Um, that definitely changed my, uh, my, my mixes for sure. <laughs> and those are, when you say monitors, I mean, I believe I know mm-hmm. the reason for that for anyone that doesn't know that's so when you're at the console and mm-hmm. you're listening back to what you're trying to figure out or li- mm-hmm. like what you just recorded, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the best speakers that you can hear the clarity and yeah. everything perfectly how you want it, right? Exactly. Like that's why yeah. you want a good pair of monitor speakers. Yeah. And, You're and, monitoring the yeah. sound that you just recorded. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, before, like, like before I, I, I got those speakers, I had like, um, I had a pair of JBL speakers and they were like, they were more like cheaper. Um, I think they were like, maybe like, like 200 bucks per speaker. So that was like mm. 400 bucks, like all together. And, um, you know, I thought that those sounded great. And then, you what know, what are these new guys, uh, the price of them? Yes. The, so How they're much? like, so together they're like six grand. Dang. <laughs> That's a big three difference for those JBLs. Price. Yeah. <laughs> a three, you Maybe. went from a $200 speaker to a $3,000. Speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. But you noticed a big difference. Oh yeah. Like it's wow. so funny. So, um, so I got them at Sweetwater and mm. before I went down like to, to get the speakers, um, I was I was talking to my to my sales rep dude there 
And I was just like, hey, uh, these are the list of speakers that I want to try out there. And uh, they were all like more expensive ones. And you made um, it sound like you physically went there. I did. That was yeah. awesome. Like that's if I was in your position, I would have obviously done the same thing. Where else can you go try all these? things? Yeah, it's a little drive, but. Yeah, you know, I was like literally just there too, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> like on on Saturday. But, um, but so you know, I um, I had like a price, like a range that I was looking at. Um, I was probably I wasn't gonna do anything like like over five grand, I think. Um, and then and then like and then like, maybe a week before I went down, um, the 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 Focal speakers there was a price drop, um, on, on online. And I was like, oh, they're in my price range. <laughs> yeah. So I, I added those to the list. It's one of those things you were watching, but you were like, you already knew it was out of your price range. So you're like, oh, I'd love to get up to this level, but mm-hmm. I'm capping myself at five grand. Yeah. So you, but you still liked them enough to pay attention to them. So you well, noticed that they went on sale. I mean, I honestly, like, I didn't really know anything about them. I just knew, like, from they were quality. I just knew that they were quality. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because of you know, how expensive they are and just, and, just, and just a lot of people reviews. paying them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was talking to, to, uh, uh, to, to Jake Rye. He's another, another studio guy in Adrian, Michigan. I was talking to him, um, on the way down there. Um, and I was just like, yeah, so like I, uh, you know, uh, the, the focal speakers, they just like went down in price by like, you know, almost two grand. And, um, and he was like, that's probably the one that you're going to like end up in or like end up with. And I was like, okay, sure. Like there's still a lot of money, but like, eh, <laughs> you know, I didn't really believe him, but, um, but he like literally, right. literally like it was so weird. Like this, like the second that I switched to those speakers, I was like, I need to have these. Oh, um, and, and, good? and like, and like the way that I, was like listening to the speakers was cool because at Sweetwater they have like like they have this room for like like recording stuff for like like different speakers and 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 on the wall there's just like like dozens of just different speakers and then there's this like this like monitor like computer screen thing that you can just like flip through them and it'll just automatically mm. route to the speakers Whoa, and yeah so sweet. yeah so so you could just hear everything in real time you can go like oh cheap set of speakers really expensive can you one. pick what it's playing to yeah. 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 So, yeah. So I, I, I got to go. I've never been. I've only talked to them on the phone and through chat. And it's so great. I mean, I use that. They're, they're a good, I like sweet mm-hmm. water for sure, but I've never been there in person. Yeah. So, so what I ended up doing. So first I, I kind of, I listened to, um, just, just like music that, uh, music from like some of my favorite artists that I really just knew the mix, just kind of flipped through them. And then after I kind of like picked what I liked, um, I started to like put my own playlist on of, of, mm. of, of, of like the people that I worked with. Um, and I was like, okay, what sounds like, like what sounds like what, mm. you know? And there were some speakers where, where when I flipped to them, I was like, I was like, it kind of sounds a little bit worse, honestly. Um, and they were like really expensive speakers. So I was like, okay, not those That's ones. Crazy. Um, but then, but then there was, there was some speakers, especially the Focals where were like, like it sounded really good, but I was instantly able to hear like what I needed to do to like fix the mix mm. of like whatever instrument was. And so when I heard that, I was like, well, that sounds great because then that'll like really help me with like knowing Absolutely. like what to change. Um, and then, so I bought those ones. I think I spent like maybe like 5,000, like right out the door with yeah. that. Um, good for you. Maybe. Yeah. I don't really remember I'm proud exactly, of you but, <laughs> but that, but that was like, you know, one of, I think that was one of, if not the biggest, um, thing that just skyrocketed my mixes just overnight, like sure. literally overnight. Yeah. Oh, that's that's cool. awesome. Yeah. That is cool. cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Ryan, thank you so much for coming out, man. This was yeah. awesome. This is good. This is a good discussion. Yeah. This is a great conversation. Yeah. I love it. It was fun. Absolutely. So if, if bands are interested in recording with Electric Moon, how can they find you? How is the best way to connect? Um, yeah. So uh, email is good. Electric Moon Studios, gr at gmail.com. Um, if you go to my website, Electric Moon Studios, um, there's like a little like submission uh, thing and that, that just sends me an email. Um, but pretty much like if, if people want to, to book like studio time or like work on a project, like a, whether it be like a single or an EP or an album or anything pretty much, you know, like, uh, I'm a big fan of like, of, of like hosting, like, 
like like pre-production like meetings with the with the artists you know just so then like just so then like i can understand and they can understand like what we're actually wanting to do before like day one of, of recording mm -hmm. you know um and so those meetings I, I offer those for free um like some like you know super like super uh super chill like comfort like like uh consultation meetings um and so yeah i mean that you can either email or you know text or yeah whatever's Instagram. easiest yeah honestly whatever's easiest awesome all right great good stuff hey jeff hey ryan thanks for uh being my partner <laughs> My co I co uh, should I say co host? Is that maybe that's is that should, better? Maybe that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you I go. I like saying partner, so <laughs> suck it. All right. Well, thanks, Ryan. Appreciate you yeah, joining thank you. Today Absolutely. It's been a great time. Yes, this was such a good time. If you like this episode, check out all of our episodes on your favorite streaming platform or even our website, themittenmusic.com. Or if you want short clips of our episodes, check out our socials. We got Facebook, we have Instagram. We got TikTok and YouTube. We're all over the social media game. Make sure to check out some live Michigan music or listening on your favorite streaming platform.